Hi, this is Steve with Thresher Media Group. Welcome to When You're Ready to Listen. This podcast is dedicated to exploring the truth about God, things you may not have understood, may not have been taught, or quite frankly, had a very hard time believing. And since our entire relationship with God rests on believing, it is important we learn how to separate the truth from the many lies and fictions that abound within the religion of Christianity. So when you're ready to listen, tune in and discover a pathway to freedom, encouragement, life, and hope. In our last podcast, we did a forensic search of the evidence to determine who it is or what group of people is being addressed in Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. We narrowed it down and came up with the proof to understand that it was describing or addressing the called and chosen and faithful, the wife of Christ. But let's back up a bit and refresh the conclusion of the evidence with what this group did not do. Episode 170, Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6, part 2, plus a commercial break. Let's begin with Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 through 6. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was caused to be given to them. And I saw the souls of those who caused to being afflicted because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were caused to be completed. This, the resurrection of the first. Blessed and holy he who is now having a part in the resurrection of the first. Over these the second death now has no power. But they choose in the future to be priests of God and of Christ. And in the future, they reign with him for a thousand years. Not, not, not. And those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand. When it comes to the path they walked, this group of people did not worship the beast. And they did not worship his image. And they did not receive the mark of the beast on their forehead or on their hand. This is a fundamental requirement to being a true believer in Jesus and being identified as one who is now overcoming. Another way of stating this truth, which the Spirit previously used, is that this group, they are spiritual virgins. These now are the ones who have not been caused to be defiled with the women, for they now are virgins. These now are the ones who are now accompanying the Lamb wherever he may go. These were caused to have been purchased from among men, as first fruit to God and to the Lamb. And no falsehood was caused to be found in their mouth. They are now unblemished. In short, they refuse to be identified with any other so-called God. And even if the path the Lamb leads them down is a path of affliction and death, they follow and refuse to turn from their path. They do not break or bend. Despite the tremendous pressure They do not conform to the ways of the world, and they do not give themselves to the false Messiah or to the whispers of the image which speaks forth religious falsehood in the name of Jesus Christ. Endurance is so critical because the consequences of compromise are potentially deadly. Revelation 14, 9 through 12. If anyone now worships the beast in his image and now receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, He also will in the future choose to drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is having been caused to be mixed in full strength in the cup of his furious wrath. And he will in the future be caused to be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment now goes up forever and ever. They now have no rest day and night, those who are now worshiping the beast in his image, and whoever now receives the mark of his name. Here now is the perseverance of the saints who are now keeping the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Yes, this is the perseverance or the endurance of the holy ones who are the recipients of the promises and who must walk down the path which the Lamb sets before them. The one who has been enduring until the end, the same will in the future be caused to be saved. Who? The bondservants of Jesus Christ. Based on the evidence in the Codex regarding the promises of God, and the path which these ones must walk, this passage can only be talking about the bondservants of Jesus Christ, his two witnesses, 
those who are now believing and are now overcoming the called and chosen and faithful, the wife of Christ. Throughout the Codex, there are no others that could be identified with this very specific forensic evidence. Blessed and holy is he who is now having a part in the resurrection, the first. The resurrection, the first, Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was caused to be given to them. And I saw the souls of those who caused to being afflicted because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were caused to be completed. This, the resurrection, the first. Blessed and holy, or set apart, he who is now having a part in the resurrection, the first. Over these, the second death now has no power, but they choose in the future to be priests of God and of Christ, and in the future, they reign with him for a thousand years. Revelation details two resurrections, a resurrection of the bondservants of Jesus Christ at an event we call the rapture, though it's not designated as such in the Codex and a resurrection of all others which will occur immediately before they appear before the great white throne of God in judgment. This second resurrection is detailed in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. The first, just to clarify, in the Greek there are various words which translate as first. The numeric value is in the first day of the week is different than the noun, which is indicative of a beginning both of which are different from the adjectives, which describes as something as being the original, with nothing else coming before it in time or in a series. In this instance, the Greek word protos is used, and it is an adjective, and it literally means first in time, with nothing else coming before it in time or in a series. This is literally referring to the first or the original resurrection, which in our culture we generically refer to as the rapture. Being the adjective, again, indicative as to the first in time, there can be no other prior resurrections or even a partial resurrection as some have proffered. This is the resurrection, the first. Fiction alert, fiction alert, partial resurrection. In our popular end times culture, there are teachers who are so committed to a pre-tribulation rapture, yet They struggle. They struggle with how to reconcile their view with the weight of Scripture. So they make up a way to bridge their problem without having to give up on their pre-tribulation message. They say that the first resurrection is broken up into pieces, into partial resurrections. They claim that the church as we know it will be raptured prior to any of the events in the book of Revelation. Then those who die during the tribulation for their testimony of Jesus those they call the tribulation saints, who do not worship the beast or take the mark of the beast, will be resurrected as described in Revelation chapter 11, verses 11 through 12, when the two witnesses are raised from the dead. And then another partial resurrection detailed in Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 through 16, when the earth is harvested. Still others say there's another partial resurrection at the end of the tribulation for those who are faithful and endure. They will be resurrected, and then suddenly, instantly, they will return with Christ. These teachers claim that all these partial resurrections together make up the first resurrection. And this sort of nonsense is why we stick with the code. Given the use of protos as an adjective, there can be no partial resurrections, as some teachers have conjured and twisted the scripture just to support their false teaching of a pre tribulation rapture. Again, protos literally means first in time with nothing else coming before it in time or in a series. There is the resurrection, the first, and yes, the original Greek text, the Spirit included the singular article the both before and after resurrection. It seems that he rendered it this way to cut off those who would make up fiction like that of partial resurrections. The resurrection, the first results in the rapture or the snatching away of those who are now believing and now overcoming. Those who are raptured at the resurrection, the first, are those who will sit on the thrones to whom judgment will be given. Blessed and holy is he who is now having a part in 
the resurrection, the first. And then there is the second resurrection unto judgment, where many, but not all, will be subject to the second death. Let's circle back around to our passage in Revelation 24 through 6. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was caused to be given to them. And I saw the souls of those who caused to being afflicted because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were caused to be completed. This, the resurrection, the first, blessed and holy, or set apart, he who is now having a part in the resurrection, the first. Over these, the second death now has no power, but they choose in the future to be priests of God and of Christ, and in the future, they reign with him for a thousand years. Those who are pounded and afflicted with calamity and even killed for their testimony, including those during the first three and a half years of the tribulation, are specifically identified in Revelation chapter 14, verse 4 through 5, as follows. We covered this just a little bit ago, but we need to reinforce this. These now are the ones who have not been caused to be defiled with women, for they now are virgins. These now are the ones who are now accompanying the Lamb wherever he may now go. These were caused to have been purchased from among men as first fruit to God and to the Lamb, and no falsehood was caused to be found in the mouth. They are now unblemished. The resurrection the first is a promise made to those who are now believing and are now accompanying the Lamb wherever he may now go. These are the promises that were given to those who are now overcoming, just as Jesus communicated to the churches of Smyrna and Thyatira. These are those who will be priests of God and of Christ, who will reign with him for a thousand years. They will not be hurt by the second death, for they are the first fruits among God's creation. And they are even now having a part in the resurrection, the first. Once again, there is the resurrection, the first, which impacts the wife of Christ, and then the resurrection, which impacts the rest of humanity. As we studied, Revelation 11 and 14 overlay on top of each other. And they tell the same story of divine rescue from different perspectives. Revelation 11 tells the story from the view of those who are raptured, or technically those who are watching them be raptured. And Revelation 14, 14 through 16 tells the story from the perspective of Jesus, who is the one who reaps the harvest of humanity from the earth. Then after Jesus' second coming, and after the 1,000-year reign of Christ on the earth, There will be the second resurrection, which we'll get to in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, which tells the rest of the story for the rest of the dead. Other than these two resurrections, there are no other resurrections detailed in Revelation or anywhere else in the Codex, whether of the people of God or of general humanity. Blessed and holy, literally set apart, he who is now having a part in the resurrection, the first. Blessed and holy, supremely blessed and set apart by God are those who are now having a part, rendered in the present active participle, in the resurrection the first. Being rendered in the present tense, this promise of blessing and being set apart applies to all true believers who live in every age, every moment of now, to those who are now overcoming the rest of the dead. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were caused to be completed. All those who died not being measured off in the sanctuary of God because they were not found worshiping within the sanctuary from the beginning of time until the time Jesus returns will stay dead, presumably in Sheol, the place of the unrighteous dead, until this 1,000-year period of Satan's internment is completed. Once that time is completed, then things get even more jacked up than we have already studied. I mean, things get crazy, ball crazy. But the point the Spirit wants to make is that the rest of the dead will stay dead and out of the picture, so to speak, until the time of the great white throne judgment, where many will be swallowed up by the second death. It's time for our commercial break. The Millennial Kingdom. Before we continue with the text, which literally jumps to the end of of the 1,000-year period, The Codex provides us more information about what happens between the time of Jesus' second coming 
through the end of the 1,000 year period. In fact, the codex speaks volumes about this time. It is important that we address this content because the codex paints a glorious picture of life without the devil and his demons. With that said, this is a short commercial break to shore up our understanding of this glorious time. This will not be a comprehensive study of the millennial. We'll just be touching on some of the voluminous passages regarding the 1,000 year reign of Christ on the earth. Let us first cover some basics. Jesus will be reigning as the ultimate monarch. The wife of Christ, aka the called and chosen and faithful, are reigning with him over the nations. The dragon, who is Satan, the devil, and the serpent of old, is locked away in the abyss. As far as we can tell, the demonic angels are being punished for a while, and they will be judged. But as for this 1,000-year period, they do not seem to be impacting humanity. There are some from the nations who, though they did not place their faith in Jesus during their life, they are deemed to be righteous because they honored Jesus' wife, and they did not take the mark of the beast nor bow down to worship him or his image. Yahweh is honored by people of other nations from morning until night. They will be identified as sheep, as belonging to God. Some will be distinctly Jewish and others distinctly Gentile. They will live and thrive during this 1,000-year period. As for the Jewish remnant, Yahweh stated, For the sons of Israel will remain for many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred pillar, and without ephod or household idols. Afterward, the sons of Israel will return and seek Yahweh their God and David their king, and they will come trembling to Yahweh and to his goodness in the last days. Also, O Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you when I restore the fortunes of my people. There will also be those who refuse to honor the son or his wife. They will be identified as goats, as belonging to the demonic lot, and they will face eternal punishment. When Jesus returns riding on his white horse on to battle, there'll be a great slaughter. However, he will protect those who are his own. This includes those of the nation of Israel who fled, the one-third who will come through the fire, and those of the Gentile nations who are deemed to be righteous. Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 through chapter 4, verse 3. They shall be mine, says Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. And in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evil doers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, so that it will lead them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 13, 8 through 9. It will come about in all the land, declares Yahweh, that two parts in it will be cut off and perish, but the third will be left in it. And I will bring the third part through the fire, refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people. And they will say, Yahweh is my God. Yahweh will protect his own, even though they must pass through the terrible fire of his wrath upon the earth. Those who fear and esteem his name will not only be spared, but they will also be permitted to enter the Lord's kingdom, whereas the goats will be summarily punished. This is very similar to the first time Yahweh destroyed the earth with a flood. First, he took his bondservant, Enoch, and raptured him to heaven. And then he ensured that a remnant, eight people, was rescued through the flood. Not from the flood, but through the flood. Matthew 24, verse 31. And he will in the future send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will in the future gather them together, his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Yahweh will call out to his angels to supernaturally gather the peoples of the world to come and sit before his judgment seat in Mount Zion at the mountain of gathering, which we have identified as Jerusalem. Those who are the elect, the sheep will be rescued. 
and the goats will be judged. The sheep and goats, Matthew verse, chapter 25, verse 31 through 46. When the Son of Man may come in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will in the future sit on his glorious throne. Before him in the future will be caused to be gathered all the nations, and he will in the future separate people one from another as a shepherd now separates the sheep from the goats. And he will in the future place the sheep on its right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will in the future say to those on his right, come, you have been caused to being blessed. You who have been caused to being blessed by my father, you are commanded to inherit the kingdom, caused to being prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I chose to have been a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you chose to have visited me. I chose to have been in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous in the future will be caused to answer him, now saying, Lord, when did we see you now being hungry and feed you or now being thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you now being sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will be caused to answering them. And in the future say unto them, Truly I now say to you, As you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. By the way, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11, we are told that Jesus is not ashamed to call the sons of the Father, those who have been set apart, his brethren, his brothers. Then he will in the future say to those on his left, you are commanded to choose to now depart from me. You caused to having been cursed, you caused to having been cursed into the fire, the eternal that was caused to having been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I chose to have been a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you chose not to visit me. Then they also will in the future be caused to answer now saying, Lord, when did we see you now being hungry or now being thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will in the future be caused to answer them now saying, truly, I now say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will in the future choose to go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. I mean, this is mind blowing. The entire issue between the sheep and the goats, between those deemed to be righteous, the elect, and those who go away into eternal punishment, is how each group treated the wife of Christ, his brethren. As stated previously, from Genesis to Revelation, the bride of Christ is at the center of this entire narrative. The entire codex captures this love story. A person who lives through the tribulation will come before Jesus and they will be judged based on how they treated the bondservants of Christ. This judgment is consistent with what Jesus told his disciples. He who chooses to now be receiving you chooses to now receive me. And he who chooses to now be receiving me chooses to now receive him who has been sending me. The one who is now listening to you now listens to me. And the one who is now rejecting you now rejects me. And he who is now rejecting me now rejects the one who sent me. Truly, truly, I now say to you, he who is now receiving whomever I may send now receives me. And he who is now receiving me now receives him who has been sending me. And whoever in the name of a disciple may give one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink, Truly, I now say to you, he shall in no way lose his reward. Those who had mercy on the wife of Christ and treated them with even the least amount of kindness will be blessed and permitted to enter this glorious kingdom. Keep in mind, however, the sheep, those who are privileged to enter this kingdom, are not like the wife of Christ. They're not born again, and they do not have the spirit of God dwelling within them. They do not have supernatural bodies, and they are not cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. They are ceremonially cleansed, so to speak, by the blood of the sacrifice of humanity, which Yahweh offers up for them in the same way that the Levitical sacrifices once cleansed humanity in days past. 
We are told that Yahweh is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. In other words, he will bring a cleansing. And with the sheep having been cleansed through the fires of suffering, they will get to enter the time of the 1,000-year reign. But they will not rule. They will be the subjects over which the wife of Christ will rule. This is alluded to in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23, verse 3 through 4. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their pasture, and they will be fruitful and multiply. I will also raise up shepherds over them, and they will tend them, and they will not be afraid any longer, nor be terrified, nor will any be missing, declares Yahweh. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14 through 19. Return, O faithless sons, declares Yahweh, for I am a master to you, and I will take you one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you on knowledge and understanding. It shall be in those days that you are multiplied and increased in the land, declares Yahweh. They'll no longer say, the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, and it will not come to mind, nor will they remember it, nor will they miss it, nor will it be made again. At that time, they will call Jerusalem the throne of Yahweh, and all the nations will be gathered to it, to Jerusalem, for the name of Yahweh. Nor will they walk any more after the stubbornness of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel, and they will come together from the land of the north to the land that I gave your fathers as an inheritance. Then I said, How I could set you among my sons, the shepherds, the wife of Christ, the called and chosen and faithful sons of God. Then I said, how I would set you among my sons and give you a pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of the nations. And I said, you shall call me my father and not turn away from following me. Though they do not rule, the remnant of righteous ones will rejoice that they are granted this privilege of living under the reign of Christ and ruled by the wife of Christ. Isaiah 24, 14 through 16. But all who are left shout and sing for joy. Those in the West praise Yahweh's majesty. In the Eastern lands, give glory to Yahweh. In the lands beyond the sea, praise the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. We hear songs of praise from the ends of the earth, songs that give glory to the righteous one. But for those who took advantage, ignored, used, hurt, mistreated, imprisoned, impoverished, martyred the people of God, and refuse to even give them a drink when they were thirsty. They will go away into eternal punishment. Their judgment is sealed. They will not enjoy this glorious kingdom on earth. Matthew chapter 13, verse 40 through 43. Just as the weeds are now caused to be gathered and are now caused to be burned with fire, so in the future will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will in the future send his angels And they will, in the future, gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and those now performing lawlessness, those doing unauthorized deeds in the name of Jesus. And in the future, throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will in the future choose to be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will, in the future, shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who is now having ears is commanded to now hear. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 through 28. For the Son of Man now shall choose to now come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will in the future repay each person according to what he has done. Once and for all, Yahweh proves that there will be a clear distinction made between the righteous and the wicked, between one who cares for his wife and those who treated her poorly and with disrespect between those who do only what the Father tells them to do, only says what the Father tells them to say, and go only where the Father tells them to go, when he says to do, say, and go, and those who do all manner of lawlessness, including the miraculous, in the name of Jesus. He will spare his treasured possession to sheep and make stubble out of all the arrogant and evil doers, the goats. For the sheep... The son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. But for the goats, they will be as ash. Let's look at some other passages that address this great gathering of those he calls his faithful. Psalm chapter 50, verse 1 through 6. 
Yahweh, the mighty one, is God. And he has spoken. He has summoned all humanity from where the sun rises to where it sets. From Mount Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines in glorious radiance. Our God approaches and he is not silent. Fire devours everything in his way and a great storm rages around him. He calls on the heavens above and the earth below to witness the judgment of his people. Bring my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. Then let the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself will be the judge. Based on the passage in Matthew, those sacrifices probably refer to the way they treated the true believers. Isaiah chapter 27, 12 through 13. Yet the time will come when Yahweh will gather them together like hand-picked grain. One by one, he will gather them from the Euphrates River in the east to the brook of Egypt in the west. In that day, the great trumpet will sound. Many who were dying in exile in Assyria and Egypt will return to Jerusalem to worship Yahweh on his holy mountain. Isaiah 66, 18 through 21. So I will gather all nations and peoples together and they will see my glory. I'll perform a sign among them and I will send those who survive to be messengers to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and Lydians who are famous as archers, to Tubal and Greece and to the, all the lands beyond the sea that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. There they will declare my glory to the nations. They will bring the remnant of your people back from every nation. They will bring them to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to Yahweh. They will ride on horses and chariots and wagons and on mules and camels, says Yahweh, and I will appoint some of them to be my priests and Levites. I, Yahweh, have spoken. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 through 5. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to Yahweh. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to Yahweh as in the days of old, as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner and do not fear me, says Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. A lot happens in a very short time. Yahweh gathers the survivors of every nation and judges them. Surprisingly, there will be many from the nations, the sheep, who will be permitted to enter the 1,000-year kingdom. And the rest, the goats, will be judged dead. Let's stop here. And on our next podcast, we will finalize this commercial break and discuss the renewal of the world. I'm glad you tuned in and have been ready to listen. To get a free download of the full written transcript with all the scripture references footnoted, please go to threshermediagroup.com. That is T-H-R-E-S-H-E-R mediagroup.com This is Steve with Thresher Media Group. When you're ready to listen, tune in.